I'm gonna do a dry haircut today. So what I want to do is add that shine, add a little bit of slip to the hair. We're gonna do some tease cutting, uh, tons of point cutting, and we're gonna create a really fun textured uh, shag-like haircut. So uh, to start off this technique, we're gonna base it off of a side part. Now the end result's gonna have a fringe, a straight fringe, uh, but I, the reason I base it off of a side parting is because I'm gonna cut that straight fringe first, and then I want that veil of hair to fall over. So notice how it sections across the top of the head. To cut this fringe, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my scissor underneath the hair, I'm gonna slightly elevate the hair, but not too much. Now, I think where people make the mistake when they're cutting this fringe is that they go in and they elevate the hair too high and then they end up layering it. So you'll notice that my the bone of my comb is just off of the forehead. And then as I cut, I'll cut my line first and then I'll slightly start to drop that comb to the forehead and keep cutting as I drop it. That tends to get me the best uh, solid line that I can get. So right where that hairline's about to meet, you're actually over directing that hair quite a bit, but you'll notice that I'm pulling the hair from further away. So what happens is it drops that weight line a little bit longer, which I like because I can go back in later and clean that up and make it look nice. You got that nice arc to it. This is that veil that I was talking about. Now I've got that veil coming over it. Uh, I wouldn't have had that if I did this on a center parting. So I like to have that hair. Now I'm gonna go in and do tons of point cutting. It's gonna have structure because I'm pulling everything to the same place, but I'm not cutting a perfect line because I want to create that movement and texture. So as long as I'm bringing it to the same place, I'm just not making everybody match up. This is more of a fun haircut with a ton of texture and movement and not so precise. So we have to jump out of our precision box for a second to get into this cut. So notice everything's being elevated, over directed over, but also notice that I don't take anything from the temple up. So, and the reason for that is because I wanna create that disconnection. I wanna keep that length uh, from the temple. So that allows me to create that layering, but keep the length on the side and keep that density on the bottom. Uh, and the other thing is my finger angle is pointed straight down at the floor. So notice that as well, I don't go straight up with the layers. I want the layers to be heavier in the back of the head. Changing my finger angle changes where that weight distribution happens. Keep that length in the back, take that length short in the front. And again, I'm gonna go all the way down until I get to that temple area and then I'm gonna pause. I'm not gonna cut any more after that. So you can see all that texture that builds up around the face. And now the rest of that veil, I'm gonna go through and just do a little slide cutting. Uh, so a half close of the scissor, pinching the hair in front of the face and cutting it where I want it to be. This is the cool part about having like uh, different textures mixed and matched. So we have a blunt bang, but then we have this choppy texture that kind of lays over top of it. That to me, if, if I could say I have a signature cut uh, style, that to me is it. I love some precision lines and then chaos happening all over it. So. That for me, just, I, I don't know, my eye likes it. So now we're gonna move into the back. Vertical sections, pivoting around the head and really attaching it to that front layering. So that layering that we did, but keeping that same uh, finger angle, so pointed straight at the floor. One thing you will notice that I'll do is I'll do a little point cutting, but I'll do some blunt cutting because if I see where there's a part of somebody's hair that um, is a little too chopped, looks a little too shattered, I'll go through and do a, just a blunt line real quick. And that makes it appear right here is where I'm doing it. Um, it makes it appear a little more clean, but then what I'll do is go in and break up that line with a ton of point cutting. There's always technique. There's always a reason behind what we do uh, behind the chair. That's why you can't teach this in one video. It's all about learning and, and just figuring out what works for you. Now, the final thing I'm gonna do, I wanted a little more of a blunt edge on this fringe, just in that area, and then I'm gonna let it be kind of chaotic on the sides and throughout the top. So you can see how it's kind of starting to come together now. So really we did the, the dry cut and now I'm going through and just doing the fine tuning details. The last little touch I'm gonna to throw in there is some tease cutting in the side. I wanted to add a little bit more layering, a little more pieciness to it right around the, the cheekbone, the, the chin line, the jaw line uh, going through. So just tease cutting half open, half close and sliding that blade in. As I slide in, I half close the scissor uh, to create that look. And then that's gonna finalize our look. So now we're gonna go in with Joyco Dry Spray Wax. So I love just kind of lifting the hair up, spraying that in, working the product in, and then getting my hands in it and just kind of messing it up. Giving you a little bit of a bedhead feel, seeing those layers come to life, 
And then what I'll do is brush it, calm it down, and then give it a little nicer style. But I love seeing that kind of come, come out uh, when you put that product in. And then I'll take the iron. Uh, the spray wax really helps with, um, with defining those pieces. So I'll straighten it a little bit. And then there's our end result, guys. Hope you like it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and go download the FSE Now app so you can see tons more videos just like this for free. Uh, thanks for watching.